Hello, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to try out a bunch of custom made tools and some specialty tools and take a look at other tools. So what's all that mean? We are going to do a battle royale between Snap-on and Icon. Now the Icon is a direct copy of this Snap-on flush cutter. Uh, the Snap-on made here in USA the icon made in Taiwan. So what we're going to do is compare how they look, you know, how they're made, how they look, how well they cut, and a whole bunch of different other elements of these. We're going to look at the quality of the cut. We're going to look at everything. So let's get into it. So let's start with the snap-on. And the snap-on has this nice um, removable clip, as does the icon. Um, it looks like the Snap-on has hardened jaws that they've ground to a nice finish. You don't really feel the gap between the two cutters. And the cutters look very nice. They're inset. There's also, they also go to a nice point. You can see that. There's a nice point there. The rest of the tool is looks like it's forged uh, they have stamping in here snap on logo uh, a little bit more roughly forged here on the sides but overall very nice finish on the tool itself the handles nice and rubbery grippy uh, it's kind of cushion grip type thing they're very nice um, seem like pretty good quality so overall looks of the tool and fit and fish finish, it's a nice tool. Snap-on does make nice tools. Uh, some of them just don't hold up as well uh, compared to competitors. So let's uh, let's take a look at this a little bit closer. And to do that, we have a microscope. So what we're gonna do is get that fired up. We'll reposition the camera and take a look. Okay, and we're back. So, we have the microscope flashed up here. You can't see the screen of the microscope. That actually records video itself. So what we're going to do is try and inset the microscope image over here and see how well that goes for me. So anyway, let's get looking at this. So, here's our tool. And we can see some pretty nice machining and it looks like that's been heat treated you see how that's discolored looks like it's been heat treated and comes to a pretty nice point although not exactly even let's flip over and look at the other side check out the grind now that looks quite a bit more rough right there and let's change our focus a little bit Bear with me, I'm just learning how to use this thing. So, that looks a little bit more rough. You can kind of see the lines in the uh, in the metal here as we look at that. And the uh, cutter jaws look nice and straight. This tool is a little bit stiff, but it is new, so it's not too bad. You can see I have some metal magnetized onto the tool there at the tip but overall looks reasonably decent not too too bad now what I'd like to do here is we'll set up again but this time I would like to check our gap and to do that I have a specialty tool that we made up. Okay, so what we have is an LED panel with aluminum back. Um, yes, it's gotten dusty from sitting around, but we're going to put that underneath the microscope. And then controlling that, we have a pulse width modulation controller, and we have a 12 volt plug. That's going to plug into a Milwaukee battery heated gear thing. And that's going to give us a 12 volts, so let's just uh, plug this in, blow out the image here, there we go, 
Now, what I'm going to have to do, you might see the lines on that. I'm going to have to try and adjust this so that we don't have the lines from the LEDs on the screen. You can see that getting brighter as we dim it upwards. So, we got her nice and bright. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at that in the microscope. But before we even look in the microscope, here we can see our gap. And let me just close that. I got to squeeze pretty hard to get that to close. It doesn't just stay closed. You can see that opens back up. It looks like that tip is touching first. Now, I don't know if they do that figuring it'll wear in or what, but um, that's not really the greatest thing. So let's uh, let's take a look at it under the microscope. Let's get our microscope recording with our remote. There we go. And let's go in. Okay, so now I have to change the focus. There we go. And let's go in all the way. So you can see that tip is definitely touching first. There we go. Almost looks like the, the right hand side is not properly ground. And then as we move down the tool, I am not squeezing it together. The gap opens up more, which makes sense as the tip is hitting. So now if I squeeze this, I can get the base of the tool to mostly close off all the light, but the tip still does not. So that's telling me that this is uh, is not properly ground, actually. So let me try and do an adjustment here on the microscope. We'll try and bring this up so we can see the whole tip at once. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's see here. Let's go about like that. Get that into focus. There we go. That's not too bad. So, here we go. There we see quite an opening, really. Quite an opening. But our LEDs are not strobing, so I'm happy. So overall, I would say fit and finish on the snap-on, not a win. Okay, next up we have our Icon pluck Cutters. This too has the nice uh, removable tip. And let's check this out. So fit and finish on this, the tip is a little bit more rounded. Um, again, I do not feel the joint between the two. This also looks like it was forged, though it's not stamped. This is laser cut on there. Um, it does have a pretty good fit and finish, though. Uh, the handles are not quite as nice as the snap-on ones, I will say, though I'm sure some guys may like this a little bit better. But if you look at these, they just, they're not as rubbery feeling and um, they just don't feel like they're quite as good a quality. That's feeling it. Maybe it is. Uh, time will tell how these hold up. But overall, they're pretty nice. Um, just a quick look here. It looks like these are probably going to be a little bit better. But let's get them into the microscope and see how they look. So here we go. We're in there on the microscope. You can definitely see the, the tip of it is much more rounded. Let's get the snap-on out and compare the two. So here you can see snap-on here on the uh, the right and the the icon on the left. Icon is not quite as pointed 
but I don't know that that really matters a whole lot. Uh, let's look on the back here. The grind is very nice on the icon, I have to say. That looks very, very nice. And uh, looks to be closed very well as well. Uh, there we go, we just see some of the... So let's just open that up. We can see... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's take a look here, if we can get it just right on focus here. Yep, yeah, there's the cutter profile. Looks like there might be some tool marks there from the manufacturing process, but it really doesn't look bad. Let's take a look at the other side here. I'm trying to get a good view of the profile, which we did not do on the snap-on, which we can. Looks pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty nice and clean. You see, let's see if we can get, maybe with the other light we'll be able to see it better. But overall that looks pretty decent. Let's put in our, uh, our backlight. Let's whack the, the microscope first. Sorry about that. Put in our backlight. Oh yeah, she's backlit. Now, let's take a look at what we got here. So coming in, we'll look at it from the top. And we'll open her up. You can see it's actually pretty pretty consistently ground. Then as we close that, everything comes together pretty well. Now, I removed my hand over here. I'm not pressing on that. You can clearly see there's very little light gap through there. A little bit in the middle, and if I squeeze it goes away. There is a bit down here at the base course there's that big hole at the base. Um, not uncommon to have relief in a tool at the base. It's just a thing uh, because they can bind up there. So let's do that again. Open that up and close it here. Backlit. And all of that light goes away. I'll turn the tool so we can see there is no light sneaking through there. That is very well ground. That is very nice fit and finish. So I would say that's a win for the icon. We even look at it out here off the microscope. You can see the same thing. See the gap. See the gap disappear. So I think icon wins. At least that round. Okay, so now, our last test, for me, is arguably the more exciting test. So what we have here is a vise that we built to test how much force is applied, squeezy, on a pair of pliers when they're in the jaws of the vise to do a function, like cut a tie wrap. So this is going to be super interesting. I'm hoping it works. Um, we're going to see, let's fire this thing up, flash it up. Oh yeah, there we go. Getting some power. It's booting up. And we'll probably have to zero it. It's okay. We can zero it. Alright, load cells are zeroed. And all this is, is some load cells. If I squeeze this, it shows weight. Nothing to it. So, what we're going to do is we are going to cradle. Let's start with a snap on, right? Why not? We're going to cradle our tool. I think I have the vise close. Okay, I got to open it up just a little bit. I want to have both of them all the way to the back of the tool. 
the, the uh, tie wrap so that it's even because it gets a little subjective, doesn't it, if we get all the way to the front or something like that. So all the way as far back on the cutting surface as we can is ideally where we would like to be. Just so that we know, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this jammed in there so that it's just held. Because if you remember the very back of the tool, it does not, um, it does not have a cutter. So it won't be a good thing to test there. So you can see that little bit of squeeze is actually me putting back pressure on the tool to hold it into the vise. And we're going to just start turning here. And we're going to see, now unfortunately this scale does not tell me when. Now I'm no longer putting back pressure on the tool. I'm just kind of holding it in place. But this, this scale does not tell me, it won't stop with the maximum. So we're just going to have to watch when it cuts. And I'm going to try and go as slow as I can. So we'll see the tie wrap yielding when it cuts through. So the highest we saw is 2.6. This is grams for you European people. For you North American people like me, we're going to have to look this up and figure it out because my brain don't work in grams. Okay, now the tool's held well enough, I can just let go of it. 3.5. We should be getting through soon. 4.0. Looks like 4.0 is going to be about it. There we go, we're through. So that was about 4.0 grams of force to cut through that tie wrap. And then what we're going to do now is I'm going to get another tie wrap and then we'll compare the quality of the cut on the snap-on to the icon. Tool's still loose in here, we didn't jam it up in the vise. Let me pause this and we'll be right back when I'm set up for the next one okay we're back so let's get our tool set up here I got the vise backed out we got everything about where it needs to be we'll get this tie wrap about at the same spot as the other and we will start loading the vise uh, I don't think I needed to hold that as long as I did before because the tools mostly held in place we have uh, the vise is ground out to hold the tool so the top the the pressure to beat is 4.0 grams to get through the tie wrap we're at 1.2 1.0 I'm actually turning quite a bit faster than I did before 1.0 we're still in that one point, I think we're about through. Yeah, we're through. So the highest we saw was about 1.0 with the icon. Now, we're gonna go back to the, the microscope and we're gonna look at how clean these cuts are. I tried to get both on about the same angle so that we're not looking across the, uh, the lines in the tie wrap see the lines I wanted to look at try and get it on a little bit of an angle so that we didn't see the lot you know we have a little bit of different differential in what we're looking at so let's go back over to the microscope and compare how the cuts look so this round it appears as though icon took it again I'm actually surprised I thought these snap-on ones were gonna be um, a little bit nicer than they turned out to be so far. So let's see the quality of the cut with the icon and the snap-on and uh, we will go from there. So let me reconfigure, I don't want the backlight, uh, let me reconfigure the microscope and we'll be back. Okay, so now that we've cut everything, let's take a look and compare the cuts for 
both the snap-on and the icon. So now, here is the snap-ons. And if we take a look at it, that is a nice cut. It does have push-out on either side. And it's not bad. This is really the first we're looking at a cut with a microscope, so I don't really know exactly how to critique this. And then I gotta hold this into focus. You can see the whole cable tie has been squeezed into a point. And here's that diagonal that we purposely cut so that we didn't fall in line with those uh, uh, teeth grooves for the cable tie. So overall, not a bad cut. It did take more force. Now let's get the cut-off piece, if I can pick it up for that. Take a look at that. Get it into focus here, there we go. Same thing, a little bit of disfiguring from the cut, but the cutoff piece is much more square and blunt. In fact, that's even dished out a little bit, if you look at it there. And then let's look at the back side here. That's a pretty nice straight cut. There we go. Still has burrs on, e on either side a little bit, but overall, not bad. It's a pretty nice cut. Let's get it, see if I can get a good side profile here. Definitely not too bad. Let's take a look at the icon. So we'll start here with the, the back. Now right away, you can see that is a much cleaner cut. If we look at the snap-on one more time, we'll put them both in frame together. So snap-on on the left, icon on the right. I'm backwards. Snap-on on the right, icon on the left. There we go. See how the one on the right here has it's mushroomed out more, whereas the one on the left, that's perfectly straight. So let's uh, let's look at the side profile of this. Okay, so you can see how that has been cut straight down. Let's get that profile. There we go. That has just been cut straight through. In fact, there's actually a mark here on the back. So I kind of wonder if this is an anvil cutter. If you see that secondary line that's parallel, it looks like one side of the tool is doing all of the cutting. And that's okay. Anvil cutters are very common. They're used in diagonal cutters. They're used in some Lyman's pliers. A uh, really good uh, example of, a, of an anvil cutter would be um, some crimpers. They're very, very clearly an anvil cutter. Let's take a look at our cutoff piece here. Again, we see these really nice straight, straight cuts. No, no deforming of the the workpiece or the the cable tie that we've cut off. Let's take a look here. There are no anvil marks on this at all. And we cut this inverse, so the anvil marks would normally be on the cutoff piece. Uh, if you recall, we had it wrong ways round in the vise, and that's okay. So this is what your remaining piece would look like. That's pretty nice. So, I'd say overall, Icon wins pretty much on everything, except for my own personal opinion. It does not win on the handles and that's just my own opinion and honestly the handles on the icon are really not that bad it's just that I really kind of like the uh, 
the feel of the snap-on ones. Would you pay the snap-on price for a tool that doesn't work as well and doesn't have anywhere near as nice of a cutter as we saw um, just to have nicer handles? I don't think so. Um, if you're hooked up with a tool truck though and you buy this and it goes bad and you get another one and it's convenient and everything, that's kind of the, uh, the, the application for that. Um, if it were just somebody buying a flush cutter, I think the icon's the way to go. I think we've seen, not only does this take less force to cut, it's got a better quality, uh, grind. It's got a nicer, um, nicer cut profile for, for what you're cutting. Uh, pretty much everything about this is nicer and honestly the handle thing really isn't that big of a deal. Um, it's, it's a nice tool. So for the money, definitely the icon here. Um, would it hold up as good? Maybe the hardening that they did on the snap-ons here is make them last longer, but it's really a bummer. You pay that much for a tool and it's not even really ground in right. So that, that's kind of a shame. Yeah, that was kind of fun. We played around with microscope. We played around with our custom-made LED backlight. And we played around with our custom vise that uh, lets us know how much we're squeezing. Um, had a lot of fun putting everything together. This took a fair amount of work to build the vise and do everything. We have a video on the vise that we're going to be releasing. And I think I have an assembly video of this microscope um, with the remote. Let me stop recording the microscope just like that. The remote's kind of nice because if you set something up on the microscope, you can hit record and not shake it. But anyway, tested these two tools. I would have thought the snap-on would have been better, more good -er than the icon. Now, build quality, I think the snap-on might be a little nicer. Um, I think this would probably hold up a little bit better. It's the way it's it's made, but I could be wrong. I mean, both of them are, are made well. I think the snap-on's heavier. I do have a scale. We could check that, but I don't know if it really matters that much. Okay, you talked me into it. What uh, self-respecting person would say I have a scale and it doesn't matter? So let's check them. The snap-on comes in at a whopping 6.5 seven four ounces uh can i change the unit easily it's 191 grams okay and the icon very close in weight 183 grams 184 i guess if you round up and 6.47 ounces the um Caps are nice, although this one didn't seem to help this tool from getting goofed up. Uh, but it is nice to have a cap to put over the tool uh, to help protect the tip. Now we can get into some other cutters I have around the shop, flush cutters. I have an old Klein here, real old Klein. Then I have the new variant of the Klein, still in the wrapper. And I also have the variant of the Milwaukee still in the wrapper. Because I was going to do a test just like this on those. So maybe we'll do that for the next round. But I wanted to start with the big boys off the bat. And uh, epic head-to-head -head here with Snap-on and Icon. I think for the money, I'd go with the Icon. Hope this video was interesting. If you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for hanging out and watching, and um, I'll try and get more videos out a little bit more frequent than what we had been. Uh, it's just my work schedule and everything else is kind of crazy, so it is what it is. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed. If you did, hate to ask, but consider subscribing. Uh, I'm not really pushy about that stuff. You guys know how YouTube works, but if you do, when we do get around to putting videos out, you'll get a, you know, a notification and all that other fun stuff and um, helps out a little bit. So 
anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.